Hey, Shakers, and welcome to Worth Your Salt, the podcast that shakes up your marketing game in the health and wellness industry. Worth Your Salt is brought to you by Salt Marketing. Salt Marketing helps health and wellness practitioners build trust and authority to attract a steady stream of inbound wellness seekers. For more information, you can visit us online at saltmarketing.co. I'm Jennifer Oroqua, Story Brand Certified Guide and Marketing Strategist with Salt Marketing, and your host for today's episode of Worth Your Salt. Now, when I first started talking to today's guest about coming on the show, she told me there's nothing you can throw at me that will phase me. Well, of course, I took that as a personal challenge, but the truth is she said that with good reason. Today, Annie Schiffman is the very successful owner of Downstage Media, but for over a decade, she was a personal improv comic. Annie took her onstage skills and quick thinking to a whole new level when she started using proven frameworks to help businesses simplify their approach to social media. Annie and I are acquainted through StoryRand as we are both certified guides, but now Annie has written a brand new book called Simple Social Media. She's here to talk about not only her journey, but what it's taught her about how you can crawl out from under that cumbersome social media plan you have to simplify and grow. Annie, I'm so excited to learn more about your book. Thank you so much for joining me today. Jennifer, I am so glad to be chatting with you today. This is great. So Annie, because Worth Your Salt is focused on the health and wellness industry, I often find our guests have a very personal story that led them to where they are. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about your journey. Well, it's really funny that this is for a health and wellness podcast, and that's who is listening right now, because a lot of what helped me create the pager method, which is the social media method that we use in my company, Downstage Media, and that I wrote about in Simple Social Media is because I had a few clients who were in health and wellness. One was a functional medicine doctor, one was a hormone hormone, uh, treatment doctor, and I had been working in the performing arts. I had initially gone from being a professional improv comic to then doing some stuff behind the scenes and the marketing side of things. And I'll get to that in a second, but I'm just so excited to speak to your audience because those two specific doctors that I had worked with, they were not the same as a performing arts client, right? Mm -hmm. If you ask actors... And say to them, hey, when you're on tour, take some pictures or some videos of you in front of the marquee. You will get three dozen pictures yeah, right. easily. These people love to take photos of themselves. They recognize how important it is for their work. They do it and they do it in a heartbeat and they make really fun, creative things. So it makes your job so easy. It got a little bit harder when I was working with people in the health and wellness industry and they were like, we are very busy. I don't even like to take photos of myself. I don't even know if my camera does that kind of thing. I don't even know. Like, can we, can somebody else do it? Mm -hmm. And that's why I hired you. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to start coming up with different ideas for how I could create more content, not as the, not as the person who knew all about that stuff. Right. But I still needed to be able to mine what they currently had and not bother the client all the time. Mm. So this is just so great that um, it's all kind of coming full circle. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the way I got into marketing and social media specifically is because I was doing improv comedy at a show off Broadway. And in theory, we were supposed to do five shows a week, one show on Thursday, two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday. And the producers had, this was a very long running show And the producers had really just kind of lost their drive to get more people in the audience. So we had a rule that was if there are, we will only cancel if there are more people on stage than in the audience. (laughs) Okay. That was the rule. Yep. And you would be, and there were five of us on stage. And you would be shocked at the amount of times that in New York City, in the theater district, that our show got canceled. Hmm. And it was, it was just so disheartening. Sure. And um, now I don't want to disparage the, the producers. I mean, this was New York City and it was, you know, right at the beginning of social media starting. So then the traditional media forms that you could go with to let people know about your show would be very expensive radio ads, ads in the New York Times or the New York Post. I mean, those are pricey. So it's mm. really hard to be able to find a way to do it. And lots of times... Improv comics will get hired by big, big companies, Crayola, American Express, pretty much every pharmaceutical company that you can think of. And 
we will get hired to talk to their sales team about how to get off your sales script. So it's not uncommon for improv comics to get on stages with and share them with these big thought leaders and keynote speakers. So one time I was at an event and, you know, I was backstage ready to go on with my fellow castmates. And there was this marketing author named Chris Brogan, and he was talking about this new thing called Twitter and how companies could use it to build relationships with their customers. And I started scribbling notes on the back of our show flow and on the back of our script. And I was like, guys, I think that we can use this to get more people to our show. That was when I decided that I was just going to learn about, I was just going to learn this new thing called social media. I was going to mm-hmm. figure it out. And that got me on the trajectory. Now, I know, Jennifer, that you're a marketer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that you own your own business and you have your own podcast. And so this may be surprising to you, but the life of an entrepreneur, marketer, business owner is actually really stable compared to the life <laughs> of an actor. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. So I uh, decided that I really liked, especially if we had a young family and my husband's an actor. And so he travels a, or at the time he was traveling a great deal. And I just liked having a little bit more control than the actor's life gave me. And mm-hmm. so after a while, I just started pivoting to social media for the performing arts. And then I opened it up to social media and email. And then I opened it up to businesses that have teams of five or less. And, um, you know, so that's when I started working with companies in the health and wellness space and things Mm -hmm. like that and doctor's offices. And that's where things kind of overlapped for me in that sense. So I have to wonder, did the principles of spontaneity and adaptability that you learned as an improv comic, do those play a role in your strategy for simplifying social media today? Yes, they absolutely play a role. I mean, I think it's the agility that spontaneity has given me. Mm. Also, just being able to come up with a lot of different ideas really quickly. And so when we have content strategy meetings with clients, that's usually when I'll come in and I'll ask them what they have going on for the month. And then I will oftentimes be able to come up with a number of different ideas. And I think really, though, what separates me being able to come up with ideas as an improviser versus you as a creative person or someone who doesn't have that improv training is that with improv, we are told not to censor ourselves. So then we don't say, oh, you know, this is a stupid idea. We're not going to be able to make that work. Or like, Ugh, I don't know if that even makes sense. That probably doesn't even make any sense. We'll just go for it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, when you're on stage, you have no sets, no lights, no costumes, no script, no lyrics, no choreography. You got to right. make all that stuff up. <laughs> like you don't have time to be like, sure if my character would do that. Like you just go. Right. And so that really is what is important with doing this work because you're putting yourself out there or you're putting your company out there or the work that you do and the the treatments that you offer, all of that kind of a thing. And that's kind of a vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. So being able to go for it and and take that step and say, yeah, people want to hear what I have to say is valuable. And being able to not censor yourself, I think is one of the biggest gifts that improv comedy can give anyone. And so on that note, our audience is often looking for ways to build trust with their ideal clients. And so I'm wondering if there are content creation methods that you use that would help businesses feel more confident and authentic when they're engaging with that audience online. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways. One way is to just show up regularly. And I don't mean post five times a day, blah, blah, blah. I just mean like, just show up regularly. First, start with once a week. Or if you know, if you're reigniting a brand, start with once a week, then twice a week, then eventually work your way up. But when you um, are consistently showing up, that is really important. Another thing that most people don't usually talk about in terms of social media is actually taking the time and and we put time like on our calendar to do this, which is to reply to people and to comment back and respond to their DMs, to give them thoughtful, empathetic, helpful, kind answers, right? And um, and seeking out other people. So like if somebody follows you, 
then you are going to go into some of their posts and you're going to say, whoa, that looks like an amazing vacation. Love that. Mm -hmm. You know, and just little things like that help build up trust. Another thing that health and wellness brands can do, because oftentimes they're smaller and they're localized, is start showing off what makes your town or the area that you work in, that you service your clients in or whatever that you treat your clients in. Highlight that area, highlight that community. So like right now I live in, I live outside of New York city. And so the weather is gorgeous. It's October. The trees are turning. The leaves are just gorgeous. And so this is a great time to post a couple of photos of the town and say, this town is, you know, beautiful this time of year. Love living here. Love everything about it. Do you, you know, what's one of your favorite things about fall where we live? Hmm. Right. And so just doing that kind of thing, showing up at community events. And and a lot of times you're kind of doing stuff anyway, because that's just the community that you work in. So you're probably going to be there. But if they have like some kind of big Black Friday parade after Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. be there. But, you know, like people want to know that you're you're there. You're an important part of the community that you make people feel better mm-hmm. where they live. Right. So so be there and show up. And I loved in your book, you talked a lot about um, engagement um, and not just, you know, not just like on on surface level, but engaging with people in the comments and reposting things that other people post. And I like the story about how back in 2020, you were kind of a lurker on Twitter for a little bit. And then you started engaging with other people's content. And then you eventually started posting your own content and how your following really grew exponentially from that almost unintentional strategy. So I was wondering, you know, seeing how far you came in such a short time with that, what do you wish you'd known about social media marketing when you first got started? I wish I had known that I can throw away a lot of what other people say and just sort of figure out what works Mm. for me. Right. So I think especially when you're when you're new in a world and for me, I felt very uh, uneducated about it. Right. Like I had gone to theater school. I'd gotten a bachelor of fine arts like one of the reasons I wanted to do that was because I wanted to be a trained, educated actor and trained, educated performer. And now here I was in this career that I had never taken a class Mm -hmm. in on the university level. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like such a huge fraud. So then I would follow all of these people who would say all of these different things. And some of them just didn't work for me as a solopreneur with, you know, just with a different I don't know, obstacles, I don't want to say obstacles, but just like, just given the parameters that I was working Mm -hmm. in. Right. And so it was, um, so it'd be really nice. Just be like, you don't have to do all those things. You can really curate what comes through your head and what you're actually going to take, um, take the advice on, which I recognize sounds completely ironic by somebody who's just written a book on social media. (laughs) I recognize that. So just (laughs) read my book with a grain of salt, if you will. (laughs) But, you know, but it, it's just that kind of a thing because we just, I, I just feel like it's gotten relentless and there's so many people who have so many different ideas about how to do mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You, do, you don't have to be everywhere. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to make reels if you don't yeah. want to make reels. It's okay. So what are some of the mistakes that you see people making when it comes to social media marketing? They will spend hours editing video. They will follow that idea of you need to be where your audience is, which I kind of, which is important, but you know, how many millions of people are on every single platform? Like your audience is probably there in some way, shape or form, but what's going to work with your workflow? So for example, if you are a, you know, if you're a small office or, and, or you hate being on camera, then sure, there is something to be said for going past your comfort zone a little bit, but please don't spend five hours a day making and editing videos, if that's just not part of your workflow, or if that doesn't play to your strengths, right? Like figure out what's going to work for you and what you can actually make happen in a sustainable way. So that way you don't get burnt out. And if that means less posts or less posts that are going to, you know, or posts that are going to reach less people, that's okay. And I love what you're saying here altogether. It, it comes out, out as, um, you know, follow your own instincts, know who you are, know who your people are and go from there. That sounds great. Um, all right, Annie, we need to take a quick sponsorship break. Um, but when we return, I want to talk about some of the social media trends that inspired you to write simple social media. Stay with us. The Worth Your Salt podcast is grateful to our partners and sponsors, including Interview Valet, 
Are you podcast guesting or podcast guessing? Interview Valet's proven podcast guesting system provides the fastest way for you to maximize your ROI on every podcast interview. Don't guess if podcast interviews are a great marketing strategy for your business. The Interview Valet's team understands that podcast guesting extends far beyond the interview. Their unparalleled certified guest service is a marketing system designed for results, empowering you with the tools to drive success. Join the ranks of industry thought leaders who have discovered the power of leveraging other people's audiences. Interview Valet's certified guests have been on more than 75,000 podcast interviews with more than 200 million listens. So don't guess at guesting. Let Interview Valet help you build authority in all the right places. To get started, head to interviewvalet.com and take their free assessment to find out if guest podcasting is right for your business. That's interviewvalet.com. I'm back here on the Worth Your Salt podcast with Annie Schiffman, social media engagement guru and author of the new book, Simple Social Media. So Annie, what are you hearing from your clients these days about social media marketing? Well, I think what I hear the most is just that it is so hard and it's hard to know what people should be doing. If you are a smaller business, if you don't have a big team of people, if you don't have a social media company in, you know, like a group of people Mm. in house, like what the heck is it that you're going to do? It's just gotten so hard and so vast and so relentless. So that's what I'm hearing the most from my clients. But then on the flip side, what I was hearing and what helped me create the pager method is that there were certain things like, for example, clients would say, Hey, we have this blog or we have this podcast or we have this YouTube channel and nobody ever goes to it. (laughs) So because of that, then I said, okay, well, let's make sure that we keep a slot in your content that we're always pointing people in some way towards that. Mm -hmm. This actually started with the um, doctor's offices that I work with. They were like, we offer this treatment. Everybody comes in for this treatment, but they never know about this one. And Mm -hmm. so I'll say, great. Well, for the next 90 days, we're going to talk about that treatment more often. There's no necessarily like reason behind why we're talking about that one. Besides, we just want to raise awareness about that specific treatment. We know that everyone's going to come in for A, but they don't know yet about B and we're going to tell them about it. So little things like that is what I would hear from my clients, which helped me create the method. Because I was like, I just need to make sure that there's a steady, consistent stream of those kinds of posts in the content mix. And that makes perfect sense. So what what have you seen change recently? Are there things that used to work well that really just don't anymore? What does not work is that idea of being everywhere. There's just too many social media platforms now. Mm -hmm. Like when I first got started, there was Facebook and Twitter. And then Instagram jumped in. And, you know, LinkedIn's always sort of been there. Pinterest has always sort of been there. But I mean, it just, and now with threads, and mm-hmm. TikTok. When things first got started, it was like Twitter was where you just wrote short things and Instagram was where you posted square things. <laughs> and Facebook was where you could do a, like a little of both. Plus you can add links in there. Mm-hmm. And, and now you, they all do everything. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, but if you, if you post a TikTok video on Instagram and it's got the TikTok insignia on it. Right. You're going to get, di- it's not nonsense. <laughs> it just drives me crazy. So you don't need to be everywhere. Just pick one, pick two mm-hmm. and, and pick two that work with not only where your audience is, but what works with your strengths, what works with your workflow, and then just consistently show up there. That's a great idea. And and I would love it if you would give us a couple of tips, like what social media, media marketing tips can you give that people might find surprising? Okay. This one is pretty surprising. People don't think, but share other people's stuff Mm. more often. That is part of the like 15 minutes a day or so that I like to spend in those relationship building activities. But you know, we're all working so hard. So find some other people that are in your world that are maybe adjacent to you. So if you are, for example, a massage therapist then maybe you want to team up with a chiropractor. When the chiropractor posts something, share that post, add your two cents to it. That is going to, you know that there's like, they say that thing that when um, 
when you buy from a small business, an actual person does a happy dance, right? <laughs> right. I feel like it's kind of similar to that on social media. Like when you get a notification that somebody shared your content, it's like, yeah, <laughs> all right. Like that yeah. person's in my corner. Yeah. That's how you build relationships with people. So I, I really like to share posts that people put up, not in that like nasty way, like, oh, I'm reacting to this influencer about, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I really know about blah, blah, blah. So let me you know, spill the mm-hmm. tea. Mm-hmm. Um, I like being empathetic and kind and clever and fun and things like that. That's usually the approach that I take. So, um, so I recommend doing that. I recommend commenting on other people's posts for that very same reason, right? People just need to feel seen. They need to feel heard. And I think a lot about the um, song from the eighties by the police message in a bottle, you know, mm-hmm. but it was just like the idea of you just throw, you put this message in a bottle and you, you throw it out there. And then eventually, well, I mean, at least for sting anyway, a hundred million <laughs> bottles <laughs> up on the shore. Right. I don't have a hundred million bottles, but some people, the sting does, right. I mean, he makes like 15 K a day from just Roxanne alone or something. Right. So, but, but it's just that idea of like, yeah, we're putting stuff out there all the time. And then to get something back is just enough to kind of be like, all right, yeah, I, I am going to take the time to to try to build this relationship. So I, I think it's nice to make a, a list of your allies or the people in your neighborhood or just, you know, who are those people that you want to be in their corner and just say, like, I, I'm going to try to build you up. Very nice. And, you know, you you referenced the, the police, you referenced uh, Message in a Bottle, and that's a lot of your brand voice. It comes through in the book um, and it's very strong. So if we're thinking about how do we build our brand voice, our messaging, what areas of social media should we focus on? This is this is important to a lot of health and wellness practitioners to differentiate themselves in the marketplace because, say, there are three massage therapists in your, t- your town. How do you stand out? So what's important to master when we talk about our brand? It's important to know what makes you a little bit different. And then really lean into that. So like you alluded to, Jennifer, I think so much in terms of song lyrics and specifically 80s and 90s song lyrics or musical theater lyrics, which didn't make it into this book. But <laughs> um, but 80s, 80s and 90s songs, because when I was a kid, my dad was in radio. And so we always we always had music on as kids. So I just, I know the lyrics to like every Lionel Richie song (laughs) and just, that's just how I think. Right. And so then when I try to explain things to other people, that's oftentimes what I use. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I realized that that made me a little bit different and that the people who were drawn to me, they sort of liked that little, like if I would make a, a live video or something like that. And I would say something like, look, Taylor Swift has three songs that have the exact same chord progression in them. <laughs> and, and like two of them are in the same key. Like we're all working too hard. If it's okay for Taylor Swift, it's okay for us to reuse content a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and people know that and they know that about me. They know that I love music. And so when you can find something that's your differentiator, that makes you a little bit different, not even in like what services you offer, but just how you work with your clients, how you deal with your patients, how you are around your people and then just let that come through. And in the event that you have an office, then think about, and you know, and so maybe there's a bunch of practitioners there or something like that. Like then you think to yourself, okay, well, what is the vibe that we want people to have when they walk into our lobby and, and when they, um, you know, when, when we answer the phone and let's have that same vibe transcend to our social media? What does that look like? What does that sound like? What does that feel like? And then really lean into it and almost exaggerate a a little bit until you feel like you or the people who are making the social for you really understand what what that looks and sounds like. I love that. Embracing your own brand voice. All right, Annie, it's time for another quick break. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Worth Your Salt podcast, and today I'm talking with Annie Schiffman, owner of Downstage Media and author of Simple Social Media, a new book that will help you have presence without pressure. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so be sure to join us over on Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook, and let us know how you're simplifying your social media strategy. So Annie, tell me how you were inspired to write this book, Simple Social Media. So many of the different ideas and the different frustrations that I would hear from clients when I was doing their social myself... And I realized that there was sort of a, a system that I used all the time. And I realized that that was working really well in that when I would explain it to other people, they were like, yes, that, 
Yeah, I get it. Also, at the time, I didn't have other people that I was working with yet. So I would tell people how to do their social based on this method. But I didn't really have enough resources at the time to be able to be like, here, look, we'll just do it for you. Mm. Or some of the people that I was working with, they didn't have the budget for us to do it for them and to make it, you know, kind of profitable on my end. So I couldn't quite make those numbers work at first. And so I thought, okay, well, if I put this in a book, then I'll be able to get it out there at more of a mass scale. Mm. So that was really kind of how that idea came along was that I thought, okay, and anyone then who I'm telling this to, instead of me having to say the same thing over and over and over again to all these private clients, I could just hand them this book that just laid it all out, Mm -hmm. what we do and how we do it. So on that note, let's dig in. You described the the pager method that promises to give us a presence without the pressure. Can you walk through what pager stands for? I would love to. First of all, pagers are very simple communication devices Mm -hmm. from the 80s and 90s, right? Like you had it on, somebody would call you, you'd respond back. There's not a, there's not really a whole lot to it. And I liked that. I liked that simplicity. So each letter stands for a different kind of content. So it, the idea is that you're basically posting four or five times a week. But if you want to be more of a maniac and you want to like in the heyday of Twitter or potentially now on threads, if you want to do it five times a day, have at it. If you want to do five times a month, in which case you're taking each one of these letters once a week because you just want to like drop in on LinkedIn every so often, something like that, feel free to do that. Just for our conversation, I'm going to say it's four or five times a week. Mm -hmm. So here's what the different letters in pager stand for. P stands for promotional content. So this is the kind of stuff where it's meant to get people to buy your thing or to sign up or to make an appointment or to book a call. This is that salesy kind of stuff that you don't want to post about all the time, but you need to post about regularly. Mm -hmm. So that's what promotions stand for. That's what the P stands for. A stands for articles um, because that doctor's office or one of the doctor's offices that I worked at was oftentimes in his local press. And Mm -hmm. so he would say, we want to make sure that we are you know, highlighting this article that I got mentioned in. I'd be like, great. So A stands for articles. And that's any kind of long form content that either you create or that you appear in. So I could take this podcast, for example, and I'm going to share that Mm -hmm. to my audience on articles day. Also, if you don't, if you're not in any articles or anything like that, and you don't have any long form content, you could also curate Articles, so you could find other articles maybe that are in your paper or a trusted source that you like and that's dealing with the area of health and wellness in which you deal with all the time. And then you can just add your two cents. So if you don't have any of that stuff and you need to curate it, cool. Hmm? G stands for general. So general content is what you've probably been posting about most of this time, right? So this is inspirational, motivational, educational. Uh, entertaining, any of that kind of content. This is just stuff that shows that you know what you're talking about. You get where your audience is coming from and you're going to give them a helpful little nugget during the course of their day, right? So that's what general content is. That's the G of pager. And then E is engagement. So these are posts that are designed to get your audience commenting, clicking, swiping, sliding, sharing, It's all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's meant to do that. So this or that, right? We have a new client who's in the um, beauty space. So it's like, do you like short hair or long hair? Are you more of a bun or a braid or a ponytail kind of a person? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, come answer with a GIF, answer with an emoji, any of that kind of stuff. So that is meant to get your audience to interact with you because although algorithms change, And although every platform's algorithm is a little bit different, you've probably noticed this, which is that when you interact with a brand's post or a person's post, you are probably going to see that person's stuff more often, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is a way to make sure that then they see your promotional stuff, your article stuff, your general stuff. You want to make sure that you have it regularly in the mix to make sure your audience is 
engaging with you in some way. Mm -hmm. And then R is reuse or random. So it's basically take anything from any of those other categories and then just post that out as sort of a, a fifth post of the day. So this is where you can take stuff that's worked in the past, or you could just take stuff that you have, if you've made a bunch of extra pieces of content and you've kind of stockpiled a little bit, then you can, you can easily throw that into the mix as well. So that's what R stands for is reuse or random. And I was even, as I was reading and I, I read through all this, I was even thinking recycle yes. because we have a lot of long form content and that's something that we don't often post more than once. And you made the point in the book that you throw that out there once and you're like, why doesn't anybody come to the post? Well, you need to, you need to recycle it. You need to show people that's that same post again so that they go to it. Um, so I love that. I love this method. I think it's, it's really powerful and really it's, it's super effective. So if our audience walks away with just one nugget of wisdom from this episode, what would you want them to get out there and do? Okay. There's two things that you can do anytime you're on social media. And this was that strategy that you had mentioned that I had done on Twitter in 2020 to help just grow my authority, get people to trust me more. And this is really simple. It is comment on somebody else's post or share somebody else's post, right? Just doing those things, just replying to other people is going to increase your visibility so much. It is shocking how much that will help, but it absolutely will. So yes, you want to create stuff, but you also want to share the things that people are doing that you want to celebrate. Or you could also just shine a light on things that other people are doing that you think is great. So just, you know, share stuff and comment. It, you're going to find that you have, it's that same thing. Like when you go to a party, if you find that you are talking about the other person, you're asking them more questions and you're engaging them more, they're going to want to talk to you if you're not talking about yourself all the time. And so when you can do that on social, I kind of think of those as your social to do's, T-W-O, which is like comment on people's posts and share other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And what works in real life actually works on social media Imagine. too. <laughs> your advice about if, if you're at a party and you should be asking them questions about themselves. All right. So Annie, if I want to learn more about you, about your company or about your book, Simple Social Media, where can I go? You can go to simplesocialmediabook.com and it'll show you all the places you need to be. Lots of resources there too, I know. Um, so of course, a link to Annie's book and to her LinkedIn profile, as well as all the other resources she mentioned today will be over on our website at saltmarketing.co. But right now, Annie, it is time for our lightning round questions. And for our faithful listeners, you may be surprised to hear me switch up our usual questions a bit. But Ooh. hey, there's a little bit of improv required for today's episode. So, <laughs> Annie, are you ready? Yes, yes. All right. First question is pretty easy. What's the best book you've read recently? So I just read uh, Robert Rose's content strategy, and I just love it. He's one of the content marketing... OGs. And whenever he has a new book out, I love it. So um, I think it's either called Content Strategy or Content Marketing Strategy. It's probably the, the latter of the two. Content Marketing Strategy by Robert Rose. All right. Great recommendation. What is one thing about you that surprises people? Well, I curse a lot. <laughs> I do. I, I mean, I keep it clean, but like if you and I are just hanging out, I will, I will, I will curse a bit and people find that surprising. Well, you got through this whole episode without that. So that's great. Uh, all right. Next one. What is your favorite thing about the work that you do? I love creating things with other people. Excellent. Finally, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given on social media marketing? It's okay to be on one platform. Nice. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of Worth Your Salt, Annie. Jennifer, thank you. And thank you all for listening. I really appreciate it. And let me know what you thought of this episode. I'll be keeping an eye on Jennifer's Instagram. So that way I can jump in on those conversations because I'd love to hear how this is working for you or questions that you have about it. Excellent. I also want to thank our listeners and let you know that if you're ready for your Worth Your Salt debut, you can tell us about your expertise by emailing us at grow at saltmarketing.co. Be sure to subscribe at saltmarketing.co slash worth your salt so you never miss an episode. Finally, leave us a review or give the show a handful of stars wherever you get your content. That's all for this episode of Worth Your Salt. I hope you'll join us for our next one. In the meantime, let's get out there and shake things up. That is it. We're out. Jennifer, you have your act together.